I'm going to cover a complete test route from the beginning of the test center involving the maneuver and everything that's required of you, including independent driving, pulling over and stopping on the left at least three times. And I'm going to give you live feedback on all the serious faults that people will commit at most of the junctions, plus giving you tips and tricks to help you pass your driving test first time. So let's get started. My name is Scott. Welcome to Two Day Pass. A like on the video will help me out tremendously. The first things you're going to do when you go to do your driving test is meet and greet the examiner. So just ahead of us is the driving test in question. And I'm going to say hello to the examiner. Nice to meet you. Come well presented. Obviously, first impressions are a big deal. Then you will follow your examiner out of the test center, do an eyesight test, reading a number plate from roughly 20 meters away. Once this is completed, your examiner asks you where you've parked and you will proceed to lead the way as the examiner follows you to the vehicle. You may be asked to tell me question on the way to the vehicle. So Scott, would you be able to tell me what's the road legal tire requirements? Yes, Mr. Examiner, 1.6 millimeters across the central three quarter breadth of the tire, the entire circumference. Make sure that you mention that you mustn't have any damage to the tire. This is very important. The first part about the three quarter breadth and the entire circumference, you may not need to mention, just mention 1.6 millimeter tread depth and no damage. So no cuts and no bulges. Thank you very much, Scott. Now, would you start your engine? Engine is started. Literally just put my foot on the brake and push the start button as I'm in an automatic car. I will give you all the advice for manuals. So if you're doing your test in manual, I will refer to what you would need to do in order to keep control of the vehicle at certain junctions. The examiner is now going to give me the talk of what's going to be involved on my route or on my driving test. So we're going to be driving for roughly 40 minutes and we will be doing some independent driving. This may be covered by your sat nav. However, on this route, I'm going to be using signs which your examiner may ask you to read and follow as you're driving. These signs are going to be quite complicated. So when we get there, I will refer to them and tell you how to use these signs correctly. We may have been doing a maneuver. I will show you the maneuver in quick details when we get to that part. And that's roughly everything that's involved for your driving test. We obviously have the show me, tell me or show me question to cover. That will be done as I'm driving. So I've completed my tell me question on the way to the vehicle with my examiner. Now I've got one more question, which will be the show me one as I'm driving. I will talk through that, but just for the purpose of this video, it's mainly about the route and having the advice about serious faults and all the tips you need to pass your test first time. So let's go. Now the examiner's asked me to drive on when I'm ready, and obviously I'm doing my all-round checks, and I'm putting on my signal just to warn anybody that I may not have seen that I'm going to pull away. So now I'm coming to the end of the road. I need to do my mirrors and signal right as the examiner has asked me to turn right at the end of the road. Now, most junctions are closed. And what that means is that the visibility is extremely poor. So you may have obstacles blocking your view at the junction, like park cars, an example. So if this is the case, make sure you take your time at the junction and peep and creep. And peep and creep means that you're moving forwards very gently at the junction to make sure that you get a good view. Once you've reached this point, continue to keep observing to make sure the road is clear and keep creeping or moving forwards so that you can clear the junction safely. Now, as you may be aware, this road is very narrow with parked cars on both sides and oncoming traffic. When there's less base, less speed. And this is the number one tip for driving. The second tip is when you can see less, you do less speed. So less space, less speed, less see the speed. Scott, at the end of the road, turn right. Check my interior mirror and my right external mirror. Positioning is very important when turning right. 
I'm holding the center line. I'm creeping and I've got plenty of observation at this junction, taking it nice and easy and I'm completing the junction. Uh, some very strange things outside the vehicle there I've never seen before, so slightly distracted me. Um, yeah, <laughs> okay. The grass actually turned into like icicles. It was very strange. Right, anyways, back to the road. Now, the junction I just done, turning right, was on a hill. So, this would be the first junction you may cover uh, on a hill on your driving test. And what you'd need to do if you're in a manual car is basically a whole load of rubbish. You'd have to hold your clutch still at the biting point while maintaining gas. No one on the right. I can proceed to follow the road ahead. If there's no directions given by your examiner, follow the road ahead. You can see how the manuals are getting so annoying now. I have to explain the manual car. Why can't everybody just drive automatic now? Anyways, back to the manual car. Hold your biting point still. Then set your gas. Make sure you release your hand, boy, uh, hand brake once you've actually found your biting point and set your gas. The analogy I use, it's like firing a gun. Now, I've never really fired a gun in my life, but we all know you need to have it loaded. You need to have the hammer drawn back, which would be your clutch set. Your gas is the load. And then when you're ready to fire, you release the handbrake, which is your trigger, and then you're good to go. Now, if you're an automatic car, you won't have to do any of that. You just come to a nice stop by using the brake. When you're ready to go again, you release the brake. It's very simple, much safer, and most people will fail at that junction. Serious fault for rolling back when there's a vehicle behind you. Even if it's just a few inches, it can result in a serious fault. Now, if you're in an automatic modern car, you're most likely going to have heel assist. Yes, this is something that may or may not be liked by the examiner, but you can have that to avoid you from rolling back. Um, and another mention is even without the hill start technology, most automatic cars will move forwards when you release the brake, even on the steepest of hills. This does vary between manufacturers and vehicles, so make sure that you know your car well and you can handle it on the hills, especially if you're doing your test at Greenford. Now, I'm scanning the road ahead and I've been asked to follow signs to Alperton. Now, Alperton is is turning right at the traffic lights because the sign showed me a big right arrow with Alperton next to it. So I'm positioning myself into the correct lane for turning right. And what lane do you use for turning right? Yes, that is correct. The right lane. Pretty easy here. So I'm just positioning myself. Yet, if you look at the vehicle in front, you can see it's had to turn a bit left to avoid this pavement here. And now, once we've gone past the pavement to the center of the new road, we turn right. That way, we hold the correct safe position for a right turn. Now, I'm going downhill. If you're in a manual car, make sure you keep to a lower gear, like second or third. When you're going down a hill, the speed of the vehicle will increase naturally without you having to accelerate due to gravity. So the best thing to do if you're going down the hill, manual car, low gear, if not any vehicle, just hold the brakes gently so that your vehicle doesn't increase in speed too much. You may be wondering what the ding dong noise is. If you are already subscribed to the channel, you probably already know that my car will actually admit that warning chime when we reach the speed limit, which is incredibly helpful if you're doing your driving test, as most people will encounter 20 mile an hour roads, especially where the speed limit is very difficult to maintain. So having a warning chime in the background to give you that reminder that you've reached the speed limit that way, it's less likely for you to exceed the speed limit. And obviously, if you exceed the speed limit, this is a serious fault and you will fail your driving test. So I can see, or you might be able to see the importance of that warning chime. I'll be asked to follow the sign to Wembley. This is the sign that I was referring to at the beginning of the video and how it can be quite difficult to understand. 
I'm going to be going straight at the roundabout, so I'm going to use the left lane. There's no traffic on my right. Because I've approached at a reasonable speed, it's given me plenty of time to adjust my position to use the left lane and check the traffic on the right. I've followed the left lane, which means I drive over the bus stop, always drive over yellow. I'm in the correct lane for a left turn. Now, it may not be necessary to signal as this is a left only. However, would it benefit pedestrians that may be looking to cross the road? So I always signal when I'm turning left or turning right as the signal may benefit pedestrians. I scan the zebra crossing behind me and now I'm slowing down for the oncoming traffic, which is gone over the center line. If the oncoming vehicle oversteps the center line, you need to start to slow down and possibly stop. I'm scanning the zebra crossing for any pedestrians. That zebra crossing has an island in the middle. This guy wants to kill himself. Good job I was paying attention. So the zebra crossing had an island in the middle. Why is that important? That is because it's treated as two separate crossings. What that means is I need to stop for the pedestrians using my half of the crossing. The oncoming vehicle there was in the middle of the road, so I stopped to give space for it to pass. If I proceeded to push forwards any further, there wouldn't be enough room for that vehicle to pass. So I have to exercise caution and make sure if any oncoming vehicles are doing some kind of a maneuver or just driving down the center of the road, if they're over the center line, then I need to start to slow down and possibly stop. Just like now, I'm checking my interior mirror, which is important to see who's behind me before coming to a slow, which is referred to as change of speed. As you can see there, I did have a few pedestrians around, so I just needed to make sure that I was approaching at a reasonable speed to be able to react to any pedestrians that may walk out around parked cars, etc. I've been asked to take the next road on the left as my independent driving has now finished. So I'm given instructions or directions now by the examiner. I have checked my interior mirror and left mirror and then signaled last before coming to my junction to turn left. Now I've been asked to pull over and stop anywhere on the left. Don't worry about driveways on this occasion, my examiner has said, and don't worry about the yellow line, as it will only be a moment. If the examiner says it's okay to stop on the left in front of a driveway, or disregard driveway, as they tend to mention, um, then you're allowed to. If they say, don't worry about the yellow line, just pull over anywhere on the left, it's not a trick. The examiner just wants you to pull over, possibly to give you some directions, or to tell you what the next part of the test is the important part is that you know how to pull over safely by checking your mirrors signaling left do not rush take your time to gently steer the vehicle into the left adjust your position so you're nice and straight with the curb and come to a nice slow stop now the examiner is going to ask me to drive away again now before I drive away I'm actually just checking my interior mirror and my right mirror to sort of get a little grasp on what's happening with the traffic behind me on the road now that I can see there's no more vehicles coming I swiftly look over my left shoulder out the back side left window and over my right shoulder to the most dangerous side which is the vehicles that may overtake me and that is why it's the most dangerous so I check that side last before moving off and it's very important to check the blind spot because this is necessary because that's the way I'm going hence more dangerous more reason for you to check that side so if you don't you may receive a serious fault and fail your driving test now this is going to be asked of you at least three times on your driving test so make sure you always check your right blind spot before you move off into the center of the road. Now, I'm proceeding to follow the road here. I have a sign in front telling me I'm on a one way. There's another sign on the left pole here showing me I'm coming onto a one way road. Now, the next signs are warning signs. So triangles give way lines on the sign on the right on the road. And then the triangle on the left is telling me 
I am at a junction and this is a two-way road. So if I didn't slow down, it would show the examiner that I haven't recognized that it's a junction. And if I do not observe to the right and make sure that it's clear and just proceed to follow the road ahead, believing it's just a normal road and not a junction, I will fail for response to road markings or signs. Super important. Yes, it's a straight road. However, did you notice the giveaway lines and even the giveaway triangles on the poles next to the junction? If the answer is no, then you are not safe enough to be on the road by yourself. So please make sure that you're looking at poles and road markings while you're scanning the road ahead. This will help you to plan early. Awareness and planning is a big factor to the final steps of becoming a safe driver. At the end of the road, I'd like you to turn right. This is a two-way road, remember? So it's important that I position correctly to the center line in the middle of the road, which I'm now adjusting my position to just be alongside the center line. I'm peeping, creeping, and I've put my signal back on as it turned off as I reached the junction. So always have your fingers ready to reapply the signals if they disengage. Now I've been asked to take the next road on the left, mirror, mirror, signal left. What two mirrors do you check before you signal left? Yes, the interior mirror first and the left mirror second. Finally, we signal. So the order is inside, outside mirrors, then signal. I've been instructed to pull over and stop on the left in a convenient place. I've checked my mirrors and signaled. Notice there's a few trees on the left which will have raised curb. I haven't been told to disregard driveways or yellow lines. I've been given directions or instructions to pull over and stop in a convenient place on the left. I have done that because there is a parking bay marked out by white lines here, which we have in front too. And that is a safe or convenient place to pull over and stop. If I'd been told otherwise, i.e. disregard driveways or yellow lines, then I could pull over anywhere on the left. Now I've been asked to move away. I've checked the interior mirror and exterior mirror just to get a grip on what's happening with the road around me. I can see it's clear, swiftly look over the left. And as I scanned the road ahead as I was coming over to the right, I've seen the oncoming traffic. I'm actually going to turn my right signal off, which I had on in preparation to move away. This is going to show that the vehicles oncoming behind and in front that I'm stationary and not moving off. This will give them more benefit to realize that I'm stationary and proceed to just get, get away from me and get past me as soon as possible. Now that I've checked around again, there's no one there. I've done all my all round observations, double checked my blind spot, which is always a good habit, and made sure I had my signal on to tell everybody I was gonna move away. If I didn't signal and there was someone that may have joined the road a bit further down, this could possibly be a serious fault. Same for oncoming traffic. As I'm moving away, if I don't have a signal on and there's traffic that may benefit, then I can receive a serious fault for not signaling. So always signal when you move in, pull in over to stop, and when you move out, when you're pulling away. Now I've been asked to turn left at the end of the road, into a mirror, exterior mirror left, and signal, and the road's really quiet, so I'm gonna take that opportunity to drive out. New road, new mirrors. I've checked all my mirrors as I've joined this new road, and now I realize that there is traffic following. I've slightly built my speed up. What is the speed of the road, you may ask? Well, if there are no speed signs telling you the speed limit, it's safe to assume it's a 30 mile an hour road. Do keep looking for signs as speed limits are constantly changing, especially to 20. And Greenford, predominantly a 30 mile an hour area, has now become a lot of 20 mile an hour zones. The speed limits are relatively new, so the signs aren't amazing. But if you keep looking, you will see signs telling you the speed limit. And then when you see the speed limit, you know the speed limit. But when you can't see the speed limit, 
Remember, it's most likely 30. I've been asked to follow the sign here to Kenton. Now, Kenton is the third exit turning right. This can quite commonly be confused. Now, it doesn't matter if you don't know what direction you're taking correctly. As long as you go any direction safely, you will pass your driving test. The opposite to that is to go the correct way incorrectly or dangerously. So it's more important that you drive safely then you follow directions. So just remember that. Now I'm checking my interior mirror. I'm signaling left because I've now passed the second exit on the roundabout and I'm taking the third exit. So as I come to the second, I start to do my preparations with mirrors and signals. Shortly after I reach the second exit, I will signal left to tell everybody I'm taking the exit after. So you must be prepared early to engage the actions and the mirror checks and the signals to actually apply that. If we start to plan at the second exit to do that, we're not going to do it in the correct timing. So make sure that you have routines. You do plenty of practice on roundabouts. As this is one of the most riskiest areas on a driving test for anybody that's going to take the test. If you love roundabouts, then please write down in the comments below, I love roundabouts. Okay, so I've been asked to follow Kenton again, and Kenton is the second exit turning right. No one using the zebra crossing. I've checked my mirrors early, signaled to the right early, positioned to the right early, approached around about in the right lane, past the first exit, mirror, mirror, signal left because I'm taking the second exit. Now, that was quite smooth, and I hope that there wasn't any confusion there with the roundabout. The most important part is to approach the roundabout at a slow and steady speed. This is roughly related to a jogging speed. So for anybody that's been out there taking a jog, and they know roughly what that feels like, this is the exact same speed you'd like to approach a roundabout at. Some roundabouts you may approach slightly faster or slower, this all depends on your visibility. The more you see, the faster you can go safely. And obviously, the less you see, which is the rule number two or tip number two, uh, the less speed you will want. As you probably noticed, lots of 20 signs on the road and on the street signs here. Now, the street sign coming up is actually where the 20 zone ends, which is at the bottom. And above it, a big red 30 sign. So that's an area where it's actually ended 20 and started 30. I'm watching to see when the traffic light changes, just scanning my side mirrors for any filtering traffic. This is a very good habit to have. So what is filtering traffic? That is mainly any vehicles that can slip through the middle of cars. So that means motorbikes or bicycles. So as we're waiting at a traffic light, they may approach and then we would be aware of them as we move off. I have a filter light here. Filter light is a green arrow. It's pointing ahead and I'm going ahead. I haven't been given any directions by the examiner. I've checked my mirror to the right as I've gone round the park van. This is important. This is called mirror checks to change direction and they are the most important mirror checks. If I didn't check my mirrors before I moved around or changed direction around the van, then I wouldn't be aware of any vehicles that may be overtaking. Obviously, if I'm not aware and a safe driver, this will cause accidents and will result in a serious fault on your driving test. So I, I strongly suggest you do plenty of practice with checking the mirrors before changing direction. Okay, I'm going to do that now as I approach this lorry. Interior mirror, right mirror, and slowing down. I know it's safe to move around the lorry, so I have done. I've been asked to turn left at the roundabout. First exit. Slowing down to a walking speed because there's plenty of traffic on the right. It gives me more time to assess whether I need to stop. I've stopped because I wouldn't walk out. So at every single junction that you come to, ask yourself, would I walk out? 
If the answer is yes, then it's safe to drive out. Any other answers, wait until you would say it's safe to walk out. So what I mean by that is if you say maybe, that means no, make sure you wait. And if you say no, obviously that means wait. So you must say, yeah, no problem, this is easy, there's no cars there, let me walk out. With more practice and more confidence, you will take more opportunities. So you may think that you're a little bit hesitant to start with, this is fine. Make sure you get the practice in until your confidence builds and then you may become a more assertive driver, obviously within reason. Do not take opportunities that you believe to be too risky. That's why the walkout rule is generally a very good practice to apply. So we're approaching a single carriageway now. So the area I was just on was a dual carriageway. That means that there's more than one lane. So a lot of people will assume a dual carriageway is a huge massive road with like three, four lanes like a motorway, but that is in fact incorrect. Any road that has more than one lane is regarded as a dual carriageway and the speeds may vary. Ask to follow the sign to Greenford here. Look at this sign, it's a staggered crossroads. I have covered this on many other videos on the channel. So if you look for driving lessons, you will see one there that covers this junction. This one here has a, or this lane here has an arrow in it, which is actually pointing left and right. This is the best lane to use for going towards Greenford at this junction. You may have seen the sign and noticed that Greenford was slightly on the right, so you might be confused why I haven't used the right lane. The right lane would be for going right and right again. Now Greenford is in fact right and then left, so this lane will help me because I'm allowed to turn right in this lane to start with, like the car in front, holding my lane, holding my position, reach the center of the road, then turn, which keeps me on the far left lane, which is now going left only. So I'm just checking, just for habit around me, as these two lanes now merge into one. So I do want to be aware of any traffic that might be merging in with me. And that covers the staggered crossroads. Now, it's pretty simple when you know how it works, but imagine if you were doing that for the first time on your driving test. It would most likely be a very nerve-wracking situation to be in, and if you didn't have some practice, it may go horribly wrong. So, I hope this video helps you out, as there's plenty to take in, especially at this test center, but most test centers will have similar kind of junctions and the examiners are looking to see that you're able to drive independently and safely. That's how they know that you are worthy of a driving license because we all want the roads to be safer. Sometimes we think the examiners may be too strict, but one in four people that leave their house to go work or wherever they're going in their car don't come back again. So the stats, you know, are very high that, you know, there's quite a lot of people that are not coming back again. So we need these roads as safe as possible. So please just consider that. Now, uh, we're going to be turning left at the traffic lights and there's a big bus lane. I mirror, mirror, signal left now. Wait until the big fat white line, which marks the end of the bus lane to end. Double checked my mirrors before moving back over to the left because there might be a bus in the bus lane. Other vehicles sometimes are allowed to use the bus lanes like taxis and motorbikes. So it's especially important that we double check that left side before we move across and into the left lane. Okay, so traffic lights change now. I'm just checking my side mirrors to make sure there's no filtering traffic. I'm religious about these mirrors and no one's there, so I know I'm smooth sailing around that left turn. Okay, we're almost back, but we haven't done our maneuver yet. So as we get close to the test center, we're gonna cover our maneuver before we finally finish off the test route. Literally only a few more minutes left. 
So if you've made it this far through the video, thank you very much for watching. Any comments down below and thumbs up really help me tremendously. So I hope I've helped you and it's for free. So if you don't mind just leaving a little like, possibly a comment to say that I've helped you on the video, that would be tremendous. Now this keep clear zone here, I'm gonna instruct people to disregard it because you need to come up to the center line of this new road in order to turn right safely. If you stop before the keep clear zone, you'll never see if it's safe to turn into this road because the keep clear zone is so far set back from the point of turn that you won't see clearly into the new road. So this means that you must move forwards. It's necessary to see. I'm gonna take this next road on the left. And this road's generally a little bit quieter than the other one. So we're gonna do our maneuver here. So I'm just scanning the road ahead for a car for reverse parking. And in fact, I'm gonna use this one on the speed bump. So the examiner's asked me to stop on the speed bump next to this vehicle on the left. I've made that parallel to the car on the left, roughly about a door length in between. I've engaged reverse gear, done my all-round observations, and I'm just reversing in a straight line until I'm halfway past the vehicle. Once I've reached halfway past the vehicle, I've engaged full lock to the left, redone my observations to make sure it's clear to turn as the front of the vehicle will swing out and block any traffic using the road. Once I reach roughly a 45 degree angle or two o'clock, if you want to think of your angle like that, this is the hardest part of the maneuver, finding the correct angle. I double check all the way around before I fully lock to the right once I reach that angle. Make sure it's clear by, like I said, double checking all the way around. And now I'm in, so pretty simple. It's all about the angle, but obviously just practice with your instructor. There are more videos covering the maneuvers. So go to the playlist and look up the maneuvers. You'll see reverse parking in there. So now I'm moving away. I'm gonna check all the way around the vehicle. I have blind spot mirrors on the mirrors on the left there, which shows me the distance from the curb. It's all good. And now I'm going to move off. Just double checking my blind spot. I have signaled right and I'm moving out safely. Very, very slowly. If you're in a manual car, again, don't bother doing lessons. Or if you need it, fine. But if you don't, don't. Because you've got to move away safely there. A lot of people will jump the clutch and go flying out into the oncoming side. Or they will stall, roll back. These are all serious faults. Or another thing they'll do is just miscontrol the clutch altogether and they'll just go into the car in front or, or stall moving out around it and it's just very sketchy. And we're 2021 20, now, so why? <laughs> why drive manual? Everything's electric. Even cars don't have steering wheels now. That's how much, you know, into the future we are. And even there's no gear lever whatsoever. There's no steering wheel. Why, why the hell are you having a gear lever? <laughs> so why even bother buying a manual car if it's going that way, right? You know, it's so much easier to drive in a big city in a in a automatic car. So much more comfortable. My back doesn't hurt anymore from pumping the clutch. We're back at the test center now. Interior mirror, right mirror, signal right, reposition. So as I pass that parked vehicle behind me, I just pulled in a little bit as my shoulder goes past the edge of the vehicle, the end of the vehicle, recalibrating, moving in here, down the center line, reaching the end of the road. Nice observations, re-signaling because my signal canceled, moving out about a meter to two meters towards the center of the road and then steering right. If I start to steer right at the very beginning where the giveaway lines are, there's probably a lorry or something obstructing the, this side of the road. That's okay. If there's no obstructions like park vehicles or any other roadworks or something on this side, you must go out into the center of the road before you start to turn right. Because if you did it any earlier, you're going to go onto the oncoming side of the road, which is dangerous and you can fail your driving test. So there's another good point about junctions there and turning right and how you can receive a serious fault for just turning too early. 
So plenty of practice, perfect practice makes perfect. And here we are back at the test center. I've been asked to move over and stop on the left, disregard driveways, just stop anywhere on the left. This is not really a huge deal once you're at the end of the test. The examiner just wants you to pull over and stop in a reasonable area that people can still pass you. And that is the completion to the test. So the examiner's just looking for you to switch the engine off now. I've pushed my button, switch my engine off, and the examiner's going to read me my test results or let me know how I did on my test. So I've been Scott. This is Two Day Pass. I hope this video helps you. We will be doing lots more. Like I said, any suggestions, any questions, write them down in the comments down below i am here to try and help you out so stay safe guys i'm gonna roll the cameras do another video now and i'll see you there